In this tutorial, I'll demonstrate forming a pocket with an arbitrary defined figure. Start by navigating to the program page. I have an existing program I'll be adding the pocket to. I'll verify I'm in the right program and select program edit. This pocket is actually through the part and could be simply contoured out. But since that would leave a dangerous slug, I'm going to use pocket to cut it. At the bottom of the existing program, I'll start a new unit and select face machining. There are three available types of pocket units. Pocket is for all types of pocket where everything within the outer boundary is to be machined, including finishing the floors and outer boundary. Pocket mountain is for defining pockets with shapes or islands within that pocket. In pocket mountain, the floors, the inner walls and the outer wall are finished. In pocket valley, the outer walls and bottom surfaces are finished, but the center is ignored. The idea here is to limit air cutting passes. I'm cutting a standard pocket. I'll open the help screen for illustration while I proceed. Depth to the bottom of the pocket is through the part at 0.35 inches. I'll set stock removal Z to the same 0.35 value. Since I don't care about the bottom finish, I'll set it to a 1, leaving me 0 for finish allowance Z. On the walls, I'll choose a 5, leaving 14 thousandths for a finish cut. I don't have any interfering walls or clamps here, so I'll set interference distance to 9 inches. I'll break the edge with a 10 thousandths chamfer. The control has prompted me for a rough and finish end mill, and a chamfer cutter. Starting with the first end mill, I'll highlight the nominal diameter field and select tool data window. I'm going to use a half inch end mill for roughing. Skipping priorities, I'll use auto set for approach point X and Y. This is where the tool will position before plunging into the part. For a cutting pattern, I would use intelligent pocket machining on a deeper pocket. This would use a trochoidal type of cut to optimize the life and usage of an end mill by cutting deep and narrow instead of shallow and wide. But for this shallow part, I'll just use standard counterclockwise cutting. The part is solid, so I need to feed into the cut with a G01. I'll use a standard plunge for an entry method. I'll use auto set for depth of cut per pass, auto set for width of cut, auto set for cutting surface speed, and auto set for feed rate. All of these values look okay, though I could edit them if I wished. I'll also make sure M8 is on for flood coolant. I'll use the tool data window to select a 3 8 end mill for the finished tool, and follow pretty much the same procedure I did for the rough tool cutting data. Since there will be no stock in the middle for the finished tool to cut, I'll plunge in rapid to the finish depth, using auto set for the rest of the settings. For the chamfer tool, I'll use my 0.5 inch chamfer mill. Using auto set for approaches, a counterclockwise tool path, feed into the chamfer in Z, and auto set cutting conditions, making sure flood coolant is on. For a figure pattern, square, which also does rectangles, and circle are self-explanatory, arbitrary, is for all other shapes and is what we will use here. Defining an arbitrary shape is pretty straightforward. You basically draw the part, with sometimes a little help. Line, clockwise arc and counterclockwise arc are for drawing basic shapes. Clockwise shift and counterclockwise shift are for defining a segment and rotating it on an arc. Shift, is for defining a segment and shifting it in a linear fashion. Repeat end and start point are used when defining a segment to shift. See your Mazatrol programming manual for examples of shift. I'm just defining a basic shape, so I won't be using shift. In an arbitrary shape, the first line is actually the starting point. I always use line for this, even if I'm on a point on an arc, such as starting here. To start my shape I'll select line. Looking at my drawing I have a clearly defined starting point here. X is minus 2.75, Y is positive 1 inch. I don't need any of these other modifiers for a start point. To walk around my shape, I next need a clockwise arc to this unknown point. I don't know the ending point in X or Y. I do know the radius is 0.25 inches. I know the center point of the arc is at, minus 2.75 X, and 0.75 Y. With no end points, I need to enter a modifier. This will help the control calculate the end point itself. Determining the end point requires looking at the line this arc is tangent to. I know that if I have a full circle here, and I draw a line tangent to it from start point 1, 
It can be tangent either at n.2 or n.3. Looking at my drawing, I can readily see the point I want is n.3. I can also readily see that point 3 is to the right of point 2. My modifier then, is right. Corner, is for a corner radius or chamfer between this shape and the next shape. If you want a radius just enter the radius value. If you want a chamfer touch the corner chamfer key and enter the width of the chamfer. I won't be using either. Attribute open or closed, is used in a pocket to indicate an open sided pocket. Mine is fully closed. My next shape is a line. I don't know the x or y end point, and I don't know the angle from the x axis. Direction vectors are used to find the end points when the angle is known. In this quick example, the control can find point B when given direction vectors. Based on the drawing, I know the angle of the line to the x axis is 12.41 degrees. The direction vector in x is the same angle of 12.41 degrees. The direction vector in y is minus 77.59 degrees. The angle of the intersecting line must also be known for the control to calculate these end points. XY plane check prompts the control to calculate the end points and display the results. It's very rare to have direction vectors on a drawing so I don't use them. However, I have found that putting question marks in for them can cause some controls to try to solve them, creating an unnecessary problem so I leave them blank. With no endpoint defined, I again need a modifier. To choose the modifier, I have to look at the two possibilities of a tangent line to the arc from this start point number one. A line starting at one could be tangent to the next arc at point two or point three. Since we want point three, the obvious choice would be right. The next shape is a clockwise arc. I don't know the end points. I do know the radius and the center line in X and Y of the radius referring to the two tangent possibilities to the next line. My modifier will be left. The next shape is a line. End points of this line and its angle are all unknown. Looking at the two possibilities, the modifier will be left. My next shape is another clockwise arc. The end point in X is minus 4.25 inches. In Y, it's positive 1 inch. The radius and the arc center are also known. With all of this information, I don't need a modifier. My last shape is a line, ending where the first line started. That finishes the definition of my pocket. That's a lot of unknowns for the control to calculate. To see if it does, I'll highlight the last line, and select XY plane check. If I've done everything right, the end point should calculate. Selecting continue, should draw the correct shape in the window. You can see the angle of the lines was not calculated. This is normal, the control will only calculate what it needs. Highlighting the pocket, should show our work in the graphic window, where we can rotate and zoom to inspect what we've done. I'll end the shape definition, and add a temporary end unit. Jumping to tool path, let's check how it will cut. I'll use path restart to start directly on the pocket we just defined. And step into the pocket. As you can see, the pocket is not cutting the way I wanted it to. If I cut around the outside, I'll have a slug in the middle that could break my tool. To fix this, I'll go back to the program. Highlight the top line of the pocket unit. And select TPC settings. These settings are the same parameters found on the parameter page. However, on TPC settings, changing a value only changes it for this unit. The original parameter does not change. Parameter E92 shows bit 0 is currently a 1. This tells the control to machine pockets from the outside to the inside. To change it, I'll enter 00001100 and press input. This tells the control to machine the pocket from the inside to the outside. Press TPC end to save the changes. This small blue and white plus symbol tells me I've edited TPC for this unit. Now, I have to go back to the rough end mill and select auto set again for the approach points. This will force the control to recalculate the approach points. While I'm at it, I'll change the plunge in Z from standard to helical. In tool path, I'll restart on the pocket again to show the changes. As you can see, the tool path now cuts inside to out, a much safer tool path. Moving to full simulation. 
Let's see the pocket cut here. The rough cut now works great. As does the finish cut and the chamfer. Going back to the program, I'll delete the temporary end unit. And I'm ready to continue programming the part.